I've always been a horrible test taker, but this hack is actually what helped me increase my score by 50 points on my step two exam. I recently shared it on TikTok. People were just really interested in it. So I wanted to share it here in case this is helpful for anyone on YouTube. So I used to make up these stories in med school. I initially shared them on this channel, I think five years ago. And at the time I was really just doing it for the exam. And five years later, I still remember almost all of these stories and they actually helped me when I was on rotations in med school and also in residency, I was able to like pull out this information out of my brain that I had no idea it was still in there. Hopefully if you have the extra time during your studies, you can also either learn these stories or make up your own. Cause I actually think like out of all the things I did in med school, Anki is out the window. I don't remember anything that I did or learned from Anki, but all the things that I actually like made strong connections in my brain are still in there today. So. Uh, let's start. I'm actually going to share two today and they go together. So I'm going to share one for Wilson disease and I'm also going to share one for hemochromatosis. The reason I'm picking these two is I actually used to confuse them a lot together. I was like, which one's copper, which one's iron? And then I would confuse all the concepts. And so this way I had both of these stories in separate parts of my brain and I could pull them out during exams. Okay, the first story is, oh, Mr. Wilson. To set the scene that I had in my head, I have seven young boys playing on 13th Street. The seven young boys is to remember that ATP 7B is involved in this disease and 13th Street is to remember chromosome 13. They're playing whatever sport that they're playing, whether it's football or baseball, and they go to throw a ball and the ball gets stuck on Mr. Wilson's roof. They start throwing pennies at his window to get his attention to see if he can get the ball from their roof. Pennies is a way for me to remember that Wilson disease is the one with copper. That's the issue with this disease, that all the copper accumulates. Uh, I wrote here, the kids are radical with no rules and they throw pennies and damage the house. Um, so the radical with no rules is to remember that the, the mechanism of this disease is free radical damage. Um, so the kids are the radicals. And then as they keep throwing the pennies, they're piling up on the roof and on the windows. And that's so I can remember that the two main organs that I wanna remember their involvement in is in the brain and in the eyes. So then I imagine Mr. Wilson is this old guy sitting in his house, minding his business. And then obviously he hears all these pennies being thrown at his window. So he walks up to the window. He's in the middle of eating his Kaiser sandwich and he's like shaking, pulls his eyes up to the window slit and peeks out of the window to see who's there. That's to remember a few things. One of the presentations of this disease is tremor. So he's shaking at the window. And then in order to diagnose the eye exam, you use a slit lamp exam. And then because I said he, you know, I remember in my head that he's holding a Kaiser sandwich. That's to remember the Kaiser Fleischer rings, which is the copy accumulation on the eyes. And then finally, to be as complete as possible, I tried to put in some treatment option. And so I have here that the boy's mom makes him sit down in the living room and write out I'm sorry note to Mr. Wilson using a pencil. And the pencil is to remember that the treatment is penicillamine. Um, so that, like I said, locked in there, not going to forget any details. I know it sounds like a lot right now, but it's way easier to remember when these are in story form and you'll be surprised at how quickly this information comes back to you during an exam. So for hemochromatosis, the story here is called His Chrome Wheels. So to set the scene for this one, I imagine that Hugh Hefner is in his car with like large chrome wheels and all of the girls are in his car. I picked Hugh Hefner because the presentation of the disease is usually men above 40 years old. And then Hefner is to remember the HFE gene. So if I saw that as an option in a multiple choice exam, I would probably figure it out because I use this story. The girls are giving him a lot of steak, like feeding him a lot of steak and his belly gets really big. That's to remember that this disease is all about iron accumulation, like steak equals iron, too much iron. And then the belly getting big is to remember hepatomegaly and cirrhosis. Hugh Hefner is a guy that usually is like really tan. Um, and so I imagine him in his car with chrome wheels in like a really golden skin. Uh, that's to remember that this is associated with bronze diabetes and jaundice, the jaundice from the cirrhosis. He's driving his car, eating his steak, and then his knee starts to hurt and he gets like a really sharp pain in his chest and he gets into a car accident. You'll see arthropathy, so the joints will get inflamed. And then you will also have dilated cardiomyopathy. So that's why I put that he has a heart attack and gets into a car accident. Obviously he was just in an accident. He lost a lot of blood and the girls are no longer interested in him and they defer him to somebody else. This is maybe a stretch, but again, it worked for me, but the losing a lot of blood is to remember one of the treatment options for this is phlebotomy, move the iron from, from the blood. And then there's this list of three defer drugs, drugs that start with defer that I needed to remember. So I just put that into the story. And then he goes to the doctor. The doctor tells him to avoid alcohol and chicks. 
avoiding the alcohol is straightforward. Patients who have hemochromatosis should avoid alcohol and avoiding the chicks is to remember that you wanna avoid vitamin C. So these two stories, again, really, really helpful. I wanted to share them here. A lot of people ask, doesn't this take a lot of time? Like. Are you really sitting there like making up these stories when you already have to learn so much in so little time? To me, honestly, even if it took a little bit more time than another approach, I knew that this was gonna work for me just the way that I remember and the way that I'm so visual. I thought then that this would help me for the exams. I didn't realize that it was actually gonna help me for way longer than exams and I'm really glad I did that. So um, try that. Even if you right now who's like currently cramming for exams is overwhelmed, future you will definitely thank you for this one. Let me know if that one worked for you. Let me know if you used one from my past and I'll try to share as much as I can.